Yes, uh, guys, how are you? Hello? Uh, can we continue? Yeah, sure. All right, let's continue. I'm sorry, that was a technical hitch. I think uh, I got also disconnected from here, but I'm happy we are back online. Uh, let's carry on from where we left and uh, the rest can join us in the process. Uh, let me see. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, if anything is not clear, just let me know. In the process, I'll be able to explain it so that we don't lag behind. So I wanted to use uh, one of uh, our systems to explain this concept as well. Uh, that sometimes when you start to understand how these things work, then you can even start automating the process. For example, on the chart, what you are having here, uh, this is what this is our binary uh, binary profit maker version five. And it's following the concept I was explaining. The concept I was explaining is simple, uh, that uh, you need to have a trend, you need to have a level, support and resistance, and number three, you need to have a signal. Now that is the logic behind which uh, this trading system is built on. And uh, if you look at how we trade this, for example, just to, to, to show you how you could use any trading system uh, with the concept of TLS, you do this, uh, you get a signal, you will get a signal. Let's pick this last signal here. When you get your signal here, this signal is carrying a price action uh, logic behind it. So when you get a signal like this, you know the trend is up using the moving averages. The histogram confirms the trend. The long, medium term trend is up. The short term trend is up. You get a signal like this you have to ensure this candle is crossing the next support and resistance. So if you check what was happening uh, at the close of this candle, we had a support level here, which has not been crossed, but has been touched by this candle. So if you pick your signal from here for five candles, that would give you a winning signal. Just by following that concept of uh, uh, trend, level, and the signal. If you, you were to analyze this, what, whether it will give you a setup or not, number one, you would get your alerts when the arrow is here, but there's no immediate support or resistance here. So you will wait until price comes to the next support or resistance, which could be this one, or when the market creates one like is here. So by that time, it's creating this one, or this one, okay? So if you follow this one, because the candle has touched a support level and you have a signal there, then you could call for five minutes. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to uh, IQ option. So don't worry, I'm going back to IQ option. So if you were to get this signal here also, this is a put, the trend is down. The moving averages are saying the trend is also down, but you have a signal without a level. So you wait for market to go to a level, okay? Like here, that's now when you start considering taking a setup. Okay, for five candles, that would, uh, would be a loser, 10, 15 would be fine. Here is one that's clear also. You are getting a signal immediately. Trend is down, trend is down. You are at resistance. Remember broken support is resistance. So you enter a put. And here is another one with similar approach. Remember, market has broken above this level, which is a broken support acting as resistance. And the trend is down following the moving averages. And that would give you a winning signal. So generally, you could trade on MetaTrader 4 by drawing your lines, like here. So you would uh, draw your lines if you wanted. Uh, that would be a, a support, broken uh, a resistance, broken becoming support. Okay? You would draw your lines wherever you want to draw them and use them. So if, if I was coming from this place, if I was coming from this place and I'm analyzing the charts, uh, that was a resistance. Maybe I could use this one because this is the latest level. Uh, this could be a level. I know I am in an uptrend using the moving averages 20 and 50. So my broken resistance 
would be support. So market comes back and closes at the exact level, I can do a call. Now I have this also level, I think I drew it from the past. I have another level here, okay? Market comes and closes at the same level, I would do a call because I know I have an uptrend with me to support. Market breaks above this level, comes and closes below the level. But where did it close? If you look at where this candle closed, you will see there was a resistance before. So it has also closed on support and you can call again. So you can keep doing that following the market wherever it's going, okay? Here we have a new level, market closes below it, but opens above it. When it closes below it, that trend becomes inverted, but it opens, the new candle opens above it, there's a gap. That would be a signal you would consider taking to the upside. So that is how, in my opinion, the logic of, uh, the logic of following the trend, trading at levels, and using a candlestick signal to enter a trade, that's how it becomes very powerful. I have not added anything else. As you can see, I'm not even adding any other filters. For example, those, that could be an uptrend, uh, an uptrend line, all right? So I would consider that uh, this is a point, this is a point, this candle touched here also. I would consider picking a signal from there or this candle crossed both lines. This bearish candle crossed support and crossed up. A trend line and that and we are in an uptrend so that that would be a fake breakout so i would consider trading that case later on you can see this kind of a spinning top or a doji kind of candle forming at support spinning bottom or a doji forming at support uh, that will also give you another signal to start going up uh, i'm even yet to add other factors uh, you know there are many things you could add to make your signal look more powerful for example Maybe at this level, you wanted to take a signal, but then you could also carry your Fibonacci and put it there, and then try to see where is this uh, doji for me? Is it there or you would pick it from here? Sometimes you can extend, you can realize it's happening between 50 and 61, uh, which is a good zone. You can extend it further and you can see it's happening exactly at 50. That will also give you more confidence. So there are many things you can add into a, 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 a trade to qualify the setup. But like I've said, ensure you follow the trend. Trade at support when going up. Trade at resistance when going down. So if we are going down now, my approach would be that same, same, same thing. Like here, that's a downtrend, a downtrend. So in a downtrend, then my simple logic would be, I will have my levels drawn. This would be my resistance. This is my support. It will be broken and become resistance uh, later on. Okay, so we have to be, uh, aware of that. This is support. When broken, it can become resistance. Now remember, I'm drawing this, but actually these are zones because I've not included the weeks. So there, there was no week here. We have a level here, but if you look at it carefully, this was the actual level. Candles were stopping around here, starting from here, and then the weeks were down here. Okay, so it becomes a complete zone. For this one, the candle was there, and the last week was, or the last shadow was down here. So when I'm trading in a downtrend, I'm only interested in trading puts. Where? At resistance. So where is the first setup I would consider in a case like this? I would wait, the market is going down. It has created a resistance. It didn't come back to my resistance. So I may have nothing there at the moment using our current setup. Here, we see a green candle rejecting resistance zone. Closest below, resist, uh, rejects going up. This will be a setup for you to go for a put. Another one here, candle closes right on the level. We drew from the past. You can do another put to the downside. Here, nothing like that happening. Here, uh, what do you see is a red candle closing. I want a green candle to close at the level. Then I would consider a setup. So leaving that aside, as we scroll the chart to the right, new levels have come. There's a new level here. You could add the wicks if you wanted quite a long zone, I would not be very comfortable with it. Now, inside here, I will not want to trade because the lines are sloping up now. Remember, a good trend is when the lines are sloping down, a good down, a, a downtrend, or the lines are sloping up, like 45 degrees, uh, that's a good uptrend. So if we were to look at the uptrend from this section here, then we would again start drawing our levels and expect the market to continue going up. Maybe here, I saw a support, okay? I saw a support somewhere here. Maybe there was a touch here, there was a touch here, 
or I could use this level as well. I could use this level together with the week. So body and the week, body and the week. So I could use that one in the future. If something comes to that level, I would trade. There's another level here. You could also spot that. There's another level here, resistance. If broken and market comes back to the same level, you might consider taking a setup. You can also consider connecting swings like this and that. So you have uh, one point, two points, you connect them. Or this and this, you connect. You have this candle forming here, right on your trend line, moving average. And if you check carefully, you would spot there was actually uh, a, a level at that point. Candles reversed from here several times. So again, this is a hammer, a red hammer. It would give you a potential signal to call if you wanted. So there are many things you could add into the mix, but in essence, uh, friends, what I was sharing in this very uh, session is simple. Whenever you want to trade, always remember, follow the trend. I will repeat this, follow the trend. In uptrends, call. In downtrends, put. Whatever strategy you have. Number two, trade at levels. Which levels? Support and resistance, trend lines, Fibonacci, moving average, Bollinger Bands, ETC. But don't just trade because price has come to your levels. Always have something that gives you a signal. Your signal could be a candlestick pattern. It could be a doji, it could be bullish engulfing, whatever it is. But there must be a signal. Sometimes even a rejection week is a signal. Just a, a candle closing at an exact level with a week below it could also be a potential signal depending on your strategy. So I would like to pause at this point and invite your questions so that this becomes an interactive session. Okay, over to you guys. Uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, contribute to the session. Okay, sure, sir. Yeah. Yes. Do you feel like you have a contribution to make uh, to the session today? We were talking about uh, the three most important things you need for a, a, a short trade. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, say something then. Say something about uh, either what you have learned or what you need to add to what we've said. We are all learning in the process. We are all learning. We may be mentors, but we are all learning. First of all, welcome to everyone. Yes. So that we have to follow the train, right? First. Yes, yes. It is okay. yes. Follow the train. And second is the level SNR. And S and is signal. Yeah, the candlestick as a signal. Yes. Uh, look at it this way. Because, uh, just okay. Uh, okay. as you carry on, look at it this way. Uh, this is also a clear yeah. setup. Whenever you see you have a support and resistance, yeah. support and resistance like this, if you draw it from this candle, and a bearish candle closes exactly at the level okay. with a small wick below it, you, you can always trade a call on the next candle. This is a weak yeah, bearish okay. candle with a long week, almost like a hammer, meaning rejection from below. You can trade at least one candle up for a higher option. So this is what I'm saying, signal. This is a signal. Where is it happening? At a, a level. Your level is support. Yeah, exactly. Although, exact rem level. although remember now here, you are trading against the trend. Okay? That's why while you can get a one minute uh, ITM, if you try three minutes, five minutes, you will not succeed because you are going against a trend. You are trying, whenever you want to go against a trend, you can do only maybe one candle, two candles expiry. If you try longer, uh, longer term expiry, the signal will OTM. Okay, so that we have to follow the trend. If, if there is a downtrend, we have yes. to follow uh, the signal from resistance level, yeah? From resistance, yes. That, that's a better signal for you because at least yeah. the trend will give you an advantage. Yeah, okay. Someone else who has a contribution to make? 
please be open. Let's talk about these things so that you don't, uh, we don't end up struggling alone. The purpose of a webinar is for us to teach one another, to learn from one another. Yeah, so, you're right. Yes, yeah, so who was speaking? Ashish? Yeah, I got to explain. I have some... <laughs> very nice, very nice. Thank you for your contribution. If you have more comments to make, uh, you, you are welcome to, to do that. Let me hear what others okay, have to yeah. say. Yeah, sure, sure. Maybe Varun, can you unmute yourself and say something if you have a mic? Varun? Sir, first of all, yeah. I want to thank you for the session, sir. Yes. And I have some doubts, sir, in this. Yes. Hello. I can hear you, yes. Sometimes, uh, yes. what I observe is sometimes it breaks the level and reverse. Sometimes the wick touches and there is a gap and it reverses. Yes. I'm confused in the situ situation. Or, or sometimes they are, it touches and reverses, sometimes touches and breaks. Sometimes yes, it uh, touches with a gap and uh, you don't know what to do. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> there, are strategies, there are strategies you can use to trade. Uh, that's why I'm saying if you want to trade touches, you can trade touches alone. If you want to trade gaps, you can trade gaps. However, I must warn you in advance from my experience, trying to fill gaps is not going to be very okay for you, for anybody. Because there are times where a space is not filled. Many times a space may not be filled. For example, if I drew this level here, I drew this level here and I cover it with a wick. That's my own way of drawing support and resistance, by the way, from the body together with the wicks. I just do that. So you see, this candle comes into the zone. It doesn't close at any of the lines at all. So there are people who would want to say trade a call option until resistance, the upper level of resistance. I discourage that. The only kind of setup personally I find working are when a candle closes at the exact level, like here. I know I may not have drawn it exactly, but when a candle stops at the exact line, then you can take a trade to the downside. But if a candle closes even like that, chances are you don't know it can proceed to touch the other line before reversing, or it can even reverse from there. So uh, don't trade with the anticipation that uh, gaps will be covered. It is not going to happen always. Look at this. You draw your line from here, and you draw your line here. This candle touches here, okay? So you say there's a gap, you trade, you win this. But again, there is a gap. So you, put, you do another put, you lose. So filling, gap filling is not a sustainable strategy, in my opinion. It's not a sustainable uh, uh, strategy. What I find working best are when candles touch the level, or very close to the level, like here, if you draw this level, green changes to red. So that is, uh, you, might, uh, you might call it a color change uh, level. So there's no weak really, uh, there's no serious weak up there. So if I add it, then we have that. The next thing you see uh, is, look at this doji. It's closing very close to the level, but there's a gap still. Now, uh, I, can't, I can't trade, I can't do a put here directly. The reason there's a gap. There's a gap here, all right? Now, but there is a way you can trade this. For example, if the next candle doesn't open at the same level, but gaps up and opens from resistance, this is what happened here. The candle closes uh -huh. here. Instead of the next one opening at the same level, it gaps up and starts from resistance and you see it going down. Then you can do a put. But if, if you are looking at it and saying there's a gap and you are doing a call here, that would be a risky. A risky event. That would be a very risky event. I don't know whether I'm answering. Sorry? Sorry. Sorry, many of us are talking, please, one person at a time. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, Varun, uh, who was speaking? It was, um, it was Var Varun. Please, yes, continue. Yes, sir, and breakouts, fake breakouts. How to understand that? Fake breakouts and uh, true breakouts. Yes, sir. Now, true breakouts and uh, fake breakouts are not difficult to, uh, to, to, to understand the difference between them. For example, 
number one, if you are in an uptrend, if you are in an uptrend, a breakout to the downside is most likely going to be a fake breakout. Most likely. I'm not saying 100%, but most likely, a breakout to the downside will fail because you are in an uptrend. Similarly, if you are in a downtrend, any breakout of resistance is likely going to fail because of the force of the downtrend. However, if you want to see a, a true breakout happening, this is what I would want you to see. Number one, you have drawn a level, both the body and the weak. Remember that, body and the weak, combined. Body, weak. This is not just a weak here. Can you see that? All right. So once you have drawn your resistance with, uh, from the body to the weak, a candle must close above all of it. From the body to the weak, all of it. This is now a valid breakout. Uh, we following, guys? Yes, sir. Yes. A complete candle breaking below your zone is a, a true breakout. When you see that happening, the market will continue in the same direction. So maybe we can get another setup here and I'll show you. If you look at this, let me do a different line. You agree that is resistance. Maybe I can put a different color. That's resistance. I cover the wicks also. Here. Yeah. Let me put the same color. So from here, I've drawn a resistance zone. How do I know that was a, a, a true breakout? This candle was a false, a false breakout, this one. It closed inside that zone. A true breakout would be a candle closing above the entire zone, body and the weak, here. That's a complete breakout now. You see when the next candle comes back to the zone, the market ignores and continues up instead. One more example. I'll give you several examples. I've not included the concept of volume because volume is also used to measure true breakouts. Okay? Now, this is also a true breakout. This, if you look at it, this is where the bodies were, uh, were stopping. This is where your level comes from. Body to weak. This candle was able to cross completely below. You see when the market came back to the zone, there was at least a rejection for one candle. Then the market went into some range before breaking back up. Now, if you wanted to use volume to measure breakout, this is how you need to do it. Volume, you can use volume. Support and resistance, so I draw my support zone there. Using those lines, you can see I'm doing body to weeks. A candle closes completely below, but how do I know it's not faking me out? Number one, it's a breakout to the downside and I'm in a downtrend. So the downtrend will support a breakout to the downside. An uptrend will support a breakout to the outside. So in a downtrend, support is going to be broken frequently. In an uptrend, resistance will be broken frequently. So when I see this breakout, then first thing I need to check is what was volume looking like before the breakout? This is the breakout, okay? Was volume increasing before the breakout occurred? And one thing I noticed for sure, Volume was increasing. Look at those bars from the left. The volume was increasing, preparing for the breakout. So that validates the breakout. So volume, yes, volume can be used to validate a breakout. If you don't see volume increasing towards a breakout, most chances are that breakout will not work. Look at an example here. We have a level here. From here, I have a support level that has been holding the market for some time. We see this breakout, but what was the volume like? Flat, if not decreasing. The volume actually reducing in size. That's a fake breakout. Immediately, you will enter a setup like that. The market will try to fight back and go uh, up. The only advantage you have with a breakout like this, it's a, a momentum breakout. The candle closes without a week. Number two, it's a breakout of support in a downtrend. So it might give you a chance. But you can use volume. You can, also use, um, you can also use the concept of breaking a complete zone to validate your breakout. However, remember this. If a breakout occurs with a long week like this, that breakout is not going to be very sustainable. Because it means, yes, the sellers are wanting to break the level, but there are buyers here. There are buyers. If you see a breakout of resistance, 
without a week or with a very minor week, that's a sure breakout. Look at that. Broken above all these candles, there's no week. Market comes back and respects the level that was broken. Look at that. Okay, or even here, uh, uh, there was a breakout here also. Broke a breakout respects the level. Breaks out with a strong candle and the market stays above the breakout. But when you see a breakout with a long week, chances are that market is faking you out. Let me give you an example. I want to see an example where you can also check a breakout using weeks, using the weeks or the shadows. Here is what appears to be a breakout, a breakout, but look at the week below. Potentially signaling that uh, there are buyers here. Although volume increased, but volume was decreasing before. That might also give you an analysis signal that this is not a true breakout. In a true breakout, volume should be rising before the breakout, not at the breakout only. So the week number two, you are breaking out of that level. There's a week number one. Volume was not supporting the breakout. That's uh, reason number two. Reason number three, you can see the bears were weak. Weak candles, weak red candles before the breakout. A true breakout will be preceded by strong momentum candles, strong bearish candles for you to break support. And strong, like here, you can see, the candles were increasing in size somehow, and a breakout occurred. Look at this. Uh, when you see strong green candles, then you can, you can be sure the breakout is going to hold for longer. Strong candles, strong green candles. Candles of this size, not tiny candles. Tiny candles don't sustain a movement. So I think that uh, should be able to explain uh, the concept of breakouts. However, also ensure that the breakout candle does not stop at the next level. Look at this, and this is important, guys. That number one, this is a breakout of this level, yes. You can say that's a breakout. If I combine that with this, this is a breakout. This candle tried to break out, yes, failed. The next candle tries to break to the downside, but closes here, but check, where is it closing? Here, potential resistance or support. Now the next level is here. This is a breakout. You can consider it a breakout until you add the zone. When you add the zone, you realize this is not a breakout. That's why I like working with the zones. So if you draw a single line, you will be cheated that the market has broken out. But when you do a zone, you realize that no, a candle must break the entire zone for it to be a valid breakout. Now look at the candle that tried to break outside the zone. A very weak bearish candle. A very weak bearish candle with a long week below telling you there are so many buyers here. There's a lot of demand here. So a breakout like that, you can make it null and void. So I would like to uh, stop at that point in addressing the case of breakouts and how you can validate them. Maybe in the future, we'll add more points to the same thing. But I hope, uh, who asked this? I hope you are answered. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I okay. Next question, if there is. Just unmute yourself and uh, talk. It can be a question, it could be a comment. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, how are you? Yeah, yeah. I think Slim has some questions. There. Yes, please ask. He left some messages uh, that he said that if follow trend for one minute time frame, can we trade for five minutes? He asked it earlier. Say that again. I didn't get your question quite right. Okay, what? Uh, he asked that if follow trend, if we follow trend for one minute time frame, yes. can we trade for five minutes? Yes, yes, yes. On one minute, you can trade for five minutes. If you are following the trend, yeah. Yes. If, okay, okay, okay. But remember also, yeah, that could. but remember also, if you are doing five minutes expiry, remember you yeah. should not be taking five minutes expiry if there is another level next to your signal. For example, I, I want to say this: uh, you are want to trade here. You have a signal here. It's a downtrend. This resistance, but you are aware this is support. You see that? So this is resistance. Yeah. This is support then you should be worried. Yeah. If you are going to take a long expiry, market might bounce from this level upward and give you an OTM. 
So consider the space between where you're entering a trade and the next support or resistance level. If there's a lot of space, you can do long-term expiry. If there's no space, one candle, two candles. Good enough? Hello? Yeah, yeah, enough, sir. Yeah. All right, all right. Maybe one more question so that we don't uh, prolong for too long. One more question. We have like two minutes to go. Assuming there's no question, uh, I will share this video with you uh, or in the group. And with okay. your permission, I'll share it with the other members so that they can also benefit from the discussion today. Is that okay? Okay, no worry, no worry. Yeah, we will have, uh, we, we will have another session next week. Uh, depending on your interest, guys, we can have more sessions uh, because I believe when we discuss things like this, we get to help one another. So please, uh, my recommendation is if you find time, uh, practice on the things we've shared today. Uh, if you have questions, put them in the, in the group and I'll be able to address them or even members will be able to address them. And I'm going to upload this on YouTube as well. There's not a problem. I hope there's no problem with any of you who attended. Then, uh, we'll, okay, sure, sure, then sure. we'll be able to get comments and we'll be able to improve on the same. I am thinking of introducing volume price analysis later on or volume spread analysis uh, as, a, as a confluence factor in trading binary options. I, I know you are aware that volume is a powerful tool when used. Later on, I'll be able to add this. For those who are taking our courses, volume is also included in the, in the course itself. So guys, don't give up. The market can be tough, but with uh, patience, discipline, and focus, we are going to make it. Thank you so much. See you in the next uh, session. Thank you, okay, sir. See you soon, sir.